people, it's your girl Adiola. Today we're starting this episode with huge shout out to some amazing people making us proud in different parts of Africa. We're starting with this 31 year old Nigerian man, Muiwa Oki. I know he lives in the UK, but we claim he's our son. We are claiming him. He's now the first black and the youngest president of the Royal Institute of British Architects. For you guys to understand how groundbreaking this is, in the 188 years that the Royal Institute of British architects have been in existence, they've never, never had a black president. I'm like, what? As in, uh, this is groundbreaking. They had black members, but no black person has ever been president. Also, no one as young as 31 has ever been president. So huge congratulations to Muiwa. Huge shout out to him for breaking that ceiling. Muiwa has worked on so many large scale infrastructure projects in the UK by the age of 31, like the London Houston Terminus, like the North London Heat and Power Project. He also founded the multi ethnic group program of the Royal Institute of British Architects. So he's making sure that they are more diverse. So he definitely deserves it. You are doing well, my brother. God bless you. And now our second shout out of the day goes to my very own sister. When I say sister, I just look at her, look at me, we look alike, and I mean it, we are indeed sisters. Please give it up for 23 year old Adijat Adenike Olarinoye. Yes, for winning Nigeria's first ever gold medal in weightlifting. As in, guys, we have never won gold in weightlifting until this anti. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Do you see what I'm seeing? Because what I'm seeing is starting to become what a seesaw. When I tell you on this show that our women, our girls, are capable, more capable than we admit. Look at this auntie at 23, she has already won gold for her country. How are you encouraging the women around you? Do, you, do they feel confident just because you are in their lives? Do you make them feel confident or do you make them feel small? Look at this auntie, let her be an inspiration for you. By the way, when I saw the pictures, the videos of where she was training in Nigeria, it's not special. I'm not saying that it's terrible, but it's not special. But she made use of what she had, and today she's a gold medalist. And let's not forget my big auntie, 28-year-old auntie, Chioma Oyenkwe, for winning gold. This woman also won her, Jesus. She won gold for Nigeria at the Commonwealth Women's Discourse Game. The Chioma Okiwere of Nigeria has won the gold here, and that happens to be over 30,000 people. Stadium. You see what I'm oh god and of course let's not forget 25 year old auntie Rafia too for Lasha de Lawa who not only won gold in weightlifting but set a new record of 206 kg from her snatch and clean and jack lift on Sunday. Mamma Mia, as in, I'm telling you, this women, they are not playing. Thank you, Janet, my sister. We are very proud of you. We are very proud of all this women. We just have to recognize the fact that our women are making us proud at home and abroad. So the summary of all I'm trying to say is, let the women in your lives live their lives to their full capacity. And they will bring us so much pride, even as a nation. And speaking of pride, big shout out to the Banyana Banyana of South Africa. That is their female soccer team, by the way. Uh, the men's soccer team is known as the Banfana Banfana. So shout out to the women's soccer team, the Banyana Banyana, for winning the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations, WAFCON, beating Morocco 2-1. They beat Morocco right inside their own country. 26 years after Bafana Bafana lifted the FCON title, Banyana Banyana have emulated them. They have also followed in the likes of Orlando Pirates, Kaiser Chiefs and both Mamelodi Sundowns, senior men and women's teams to claim continental glory. I've tried many times as a player to win this medal. This one is so sweet. This one is so sweet because we waited four years. Guys, <laughs> 
this is so exciting. All of South Africa right now is celebrating this women. They are just appreciating them left and right. They've given them so much money. Thank you so much for making us proud. All these people, the soccer players, the discos, the, the weightlifter, the, all of them. And Uncle Muiwa Oki, thank you so much. By the way, if you live in Atlanta, just so you know, Uncle Kola Ashiru Balogun is coming to you this Saturday from 11 to 3 p.m. The man is coming from Nigeria to your doorsteps in Atlanta. So you have no excuse not to get into legitimate real estate in Nigeria. You can ask him all the questions that you have, even if you are not planning on spending your money. Go to the event <laughs> or you can join via Zoom. Maybe he will change your mind. Now, can we talk about the fact that our economy in Nigeria is really struggling? I mean, I, I mentioned this in passing in the last video, how our monthly debt service is now way more than our monthly income in Nigeria. But then I've just been thinking a lot about that. I'm like, what can we do to revive our economy? So I wanted to talk about how other countries were able to successfully revive not just the their economy but the quality of life in their country so that we can just copy what they did and not have to reinvent the wheel you know I did a lot of research about it I watched so many videos on several countries how they were able to revive their economy you know several decades ago this country's main city was a third-rate hotel so the government private businesses unions and farmers decided enough and created a series of programs that completely changed the government in 15 years. Now many people dream of moving here. Today, this is Europe's richest country after Luxembourg, and its economic growth is over twice that of others in the EU. This is Ireland. I took note. I wanted to share some points with you guys because what these people are doing is not hidden. In fact, these are some of the points that I was hoping to share with you guys, like the need to create jobs. We need to pay people well, increase minimum wage. We need to start manufacturing more of what we consume instead of just depending on importation. We need to be exporting made in Nigeria goods to all over the world. We need to diversify our economy. It's a no-brainer that we should no longer depend solely on oil. We must strengthen our our education sector, renovate all our schools, pay our teachers well, pay the lecturers well, make sure that nobody is owed anything. We need to enforce taxes, lower taxes for the companies that are creating jobs in order to attract job creating companies. We need to ensure safety. If there's no security, nobody wants to come to your country. But guess what? I couldn't. I couldn't. I got stuck. I couldn't bring you all those leaves. I can't even present anything to you guys unless we tackle corruption. None of these things that we're supposed to focus on, like creating jobs and so on, none of that matters if we don't tackle corruption. Corruption will make it impossible for us to do any of what I just listed successfully. And you know, it bothers me because those that are supposed to fight corruption are actually the ones that are corrupt the most. People will argue that in Nigeria, almost everyone is corrupt. But the truth of the matter is, if those in positions of authority, those that we're looking up to, if they are not corrupt, that's the only time that we can now fight corruption. The question is, is this global political societal corruption related to how people within these countries will undergo some minor forms of cheating in very simple day-to-day -day things. Starting with the president, he's corrupt. The man made himself petroleum minister. He turns blind eyes to corruption cases of anyone in his party or anyone close to him. I mean, look at the governor of Kano State, Ganduje, caught giving dollar bribe. Okay, you know what I'm doing. What I'm doing. Mm. He's Buhari's friend. So Buhari did not even condemn what this man did or say that there will be consequences. No, there was nothing like that. Buhari appoints his kinsmen in positions of authority. He appoints people named in corruption allegations, people named in Pandora Papers, for example. He gave out iPhone and iPads at his son's wedding as gifts to the wedding guests. His attorney general and minister of justice is accused of stealing $60 billion, not Naira. Why did not do anything about it? So, of course, he is corrupt. In fact, he is now an in-law of this corrupt attorney general who allegedly stole $60 billion and married a young girl. And of course, if you look at our lawmakers, they are not better. So many of them have 20 houses, 30 houses in Nigeria, outside of Nigeria. They have assets that they cannot explain. 
Why do you think that our lawmakers have refused to pass the bill that would ensure that all their children, all the children of government officials, study in Nigeria? These men have also refused to pass the bill that would make it mandatory for all government officials to get medical treatment in Nigeria and not go outside of Nigeria for medical treatment. Why? Because, you know, just doing that alone would fix our education, fix our hospital, but they are corrupt and greedy. They like being able to enjoy great amenities outside of Nigeria. They just don't want the rest of Nigerians to enjoy these amenities. And how can I even pass that bill when the president is going abroad for checkup? Do you think they would go against him? And it's not just the president or the lawmakers. So many of our top security officers are corrupt. In the military, so many of our generals, all those top officers have amassed wealth for themselves at the expense of the soldiers under them. Do you know some soldiers have to buy their own weapons, soldiers buy their own uniform, when the generals have houses in Abuja, in, in Lagos, in different parts of the country, outside the country as well? That is all corruption. I mean, we all saw what happened with Abakiari, the deputy commissioner of police who was caught in drug trafficking. He was caught red-handed. The funny thing is, the man was not fired. He was not undressed, they didn't, you know, because recently I saw the video of a police officer caught defending how they collect bribe. And he even said that his bosses are aware of what they do by the roadsides and that his bosses even tell them, take real money, don't collect change. That video went viral recently. You recall that on 25th July 2022, a video went viral, a video that captured a policeman who was trying to dignify corruption, to dignify extortion of Nigerians on highway. And the Nigerian police force proceeded to do a whole ceremony with press members in attendance where they used this man as scapegoats, where they fired this man, they undressed him, saying that he does not represent the Nigerian police. Mr. Richards, again, assists to be a member of the Nigerian police force. And we want members of the public so please, if you want to relay with him, don't relay with him as a member of the Nigerian police force. But the truth of the matter is, the bosses, the orgas at the top, they are way more corrupt. He was not lying. They only made him a scapegoat because he embarrassed them. I mean, nothing like this happened to Abakiari. And they want us to believe that they are fighting corruption in the police force. So if the presidency is corrupt, if our lawmakers are corrupt, if the heads of security forces are corrupt, who then is going to fight corruption? You see why I got stuck. And let's not forget that the judiciary system is also corrupt. We have so many judges that will gladly take bribe and look the other way. We really want Nigeria to get better, but how would we do it if we cannot get rid of corruption, if we cannot fight corruption? So when I got stuck, I went on Facebook and on Instagram and I asked my audience, I'm like, please, in few words, help your girl. Just help me out here. How can Nigeria end corruption? And I kid you not, most of the comments were people recommending death penalty for corrupt government officials. So I'm taking comments from my Facebook and my Instagram. So please follow me on Facebook or Instagram if you want to get involved in conversations like this. Original Anedo says, take the old heads out like Ghana did. Unsidibe Isaiah said, arrest all past and present army generals and service chiefs. Olaguju Olowu says, capital punishment. There must be punishment for wrongdoing to enforce deterrence. Oscar Ubanwa says, capital punishment for corruption. Abdul Majid Jum says, introduction of the death penalty for corruption and implementation. Ahmed Omoyemi Bab says, jungle justice for whoever is found with an iota of corruption. By the time we are reduced to 10 million, <laughs> <laughs> the few people left would sit tight. This man is recommending population reduction. <laughs> Amo Steven says, kill all those looters calling themselves leaders. Oluwale Bangboye says, capital punishment enactment for all corrupt politicians. Okay, so first of all, thanks to everybody that took their time to reply to my question online. If you're not following me on Facebook or Instagram, please do because I like asking questions like this. But then 
let's keep in mind that Nigeria is a democratic country. I mean, I, I agree that our leaders must be held accountable. If not, we're just wasting our time. I personally believe that once those at the top are used as examples, I believe that others will straighten up once they're held accountable. But then we practice democracy in Nigeria. We can't just bundle up all those corrupt people and shoot them. We have to give them a fair trial. What do you do when judges are corrupt? What do you do when you send EFCC to pick them up, but some of the EFCC officials themselves are corrupt? So how do we hold them accountable in a democratic way? I honestly don't know. And that's why I'm stuck. Let me read more of the comments, people that are not recommending death sentence. Esemua Otimize says, we need to do a factory reset on the nation and on the citizens. Corruption is not a government thing. It is something everyone indulges in. Okay, so I guess this person is trying to say that all Nigerians are corrupt, but is that really true? Are all Nigerians corrupt? Because if you say that, that means even you writing is corrupt. Let me know what you guys think about that. Underscore Bobo 101 says, change the constitution. We won't pay politicians more than 200,000 Naira salary. Any mismanagement of funds will be 20 years imprisonment. No a beg or bill. I actually like what this person is saying about changing the constitution. I think the Nigerian constitution in some ways is outdated, like some of the things in that constitution, like how we're still fighting for equality for women uh, in the constitution. It's, it's so sad. So I do agree with this person that Nigerian constitution needs to be changed. Also, I like that this person is suggesting making government unattractive, 200,000 naira. Uh, paying people 200,000 naira. In fact, he's not the only one that has this idea. That CC girl also says by changing a lot in that nonsense constitutional law that was created to benefit those politicians and greedy people in general. I agree with her. Also, Emitri Ola 96 says, take away power from the center and empower the justice system. Okay. Anyang Gwele says, government should put CCTV cameras in all government offices. And then what? I mean, they are the government. If they, they, if they can put the CCTV camera, they can remove it to do what they want to do. Even if they don't remove it, they are the ones in charge of the CCTV camera. I don't know if that would do anything. Way them eight says, also scrapping the Senate. Okay, if we scrap the Senate, I mean, we're a democratic country. I don't know. I don't, I don't think we can scrap the Senate. Let me know what you guys think about that. Emenike Emmanuel says, make government unattractive so that only people who are truly interested in serving their people will vie for political positions. Once again, I'm in support of this, making government unattractive. But then the question is, who are the people that will do that? Because if we are relying on the people in, it's the people in power that can do this. And the people in power right now are corrupt. So who is going to make government unattractive? You think these men and women in power will reduce their own salaries? I don't think so. I don't think they would make government unattractive. Andrew Amedu says, we cannot end it. It is institutionalized. Okay, this is where I have a problem. Actually, it's not the only one. Quite a number of people implied that corruption in Nigeria cannot end. Such as Gracious Idahosa, who says, stopping corruption in Nigeria is like removing heart and blood from human being and expect him to leave. It is totally impossible. Okay. I actually don't believe that we cannot end corruption in Nigeria. It may look like that right now, but to be honest, first of all, Nigeria was not like this. There was a time that things were not like this in Nigeria. Our parents would tell us stories of what was happening in the 60s, in the 70s, even though they were complaining at the time, it was not anywhere close to what we have right now. So there was a time the corruption was not thriving like it is right now in Nigeria. And if we were able to get it right then, there's always hope. We can always get it right. The map of corruption is not static. It changes with time. Societies make big changes where they become more or less corrupt. And then one can ask, what happens downstream from these changes? I personally don't believe that it's impossible to get rid of corruption in Nigeria. I have strong hope because I've seen countries that had it worse than we do right now. And they were able to reverse it. They were able to get it right. So I honestly don't believe that it's impossible to get rid of corruption in Nigeria. Long-term political corruption results on the propagation of minor forms of corruption in the people that live in these societies. And then there were some people who commented about how 
it needs to start with the family. Magnified Alaria Mumifta says we need to get the right values to be taught at family level to breed individuals with nationalist commitment. Samuel Okewale says national orientation. And I strongly believe that Nigerians do need reorientation. Something is wrong somewhere. We do need reorientation. Yayola Ola says end Nigeria. That is the solution. We cannot end Nigeria, guys. <laughs> my sister. And then, of course, there were some people who have this same line of thought as Chijoke, California, who says, by dividing this country, let Tinubu be president of Yoruba, Atiku be president of Fulani, Peter Obi be president of Igbos. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> about that? Okay, so to wrap up, I do have a couple of interesting comments. The first one is from Mazi Chimezi, who says, drop the Bible or Quran and swear them in with undiluted God of thunder and Amadio. <laughs> and watch them sit up. What do you guys think about when we are swearing in our government officials? Instead of giving them the Bible or the Quran, what do you guys think about using the God of Thunder to swear them in, you know, or using... <laughs> What do you guys think about that? Do you think it would be effective? Do you think they will actually do it? Or do you think they will be like, uh-uh, no, give me the Bible, give me... And why? Why? Is it that the Bible or the Quran does not work in bringing it on that, you know, on these people? And the very last comment that I will read is by Bella Specchio, who says, only if God arise and wipe all the bad leaders away with an uncontrollable wind in a minute. Thank you, Auntie Bella. So, but, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry several times, on this, several times on this show. I believe in God. I believe in prayers, you know. But what we're supposed to do, God will not come down to do it for us. It's like, please, stop waiting on God when the truth is. God is waiting on us to, to act. So let me know what you guys think about this comment. But more importantly, I'd like to hear from those of you who are watching this video as well. Maybe you can help us to point out how we can end corruption in Nigeria so that we can actually focus on other things that we need to focus on in order to revive our economy and make the quality of lives of Nigerians better in Nigeria. Let me show you guys this video that I saw recently, a Nigerian man who recently traveled to Canada. Ah. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's the attitude of so many people when they leave Nigeria. You know, a lot of people when they travel out of their country, they look forward to coming back, coming back to their food, coming back to the, their family members, their comfort. But now, a lot of Nigerians, once they leave Nigeria, once they leave the shores of Nigeria, it's like, oh, thank God Almighty. But the truth of the matter is, even abroad is not heaven. I mean, you guys saw the video of the Nigerian man that was killed in Italy, right on the street, and nobody, not one person helped. Not one person helped him. It's so unfortunate because I, I can't imagine if the reverse were to be the case, a black person killing a white person on the street. I would imagine that at least some people would be like, why are you doing this? Or, you know, try to help. But he was a black person, he was a Nigerian, and he was strangled to death in broad daylight, you know. So abroad is not heaven. And so please let me hear from you. I'll actually be responding in the comment section. I may not be able to respond to everybody, but I'll try my best. Uh, please help me to get on stock on how we can deal with corruption in Nigeria so we can talk about other issues like diversifying our economy, how to create jobs, how to key into this age of technology. Please keep your answer short and straight to the point. Thanks so much, guys, for your time. You guys might not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I leave, guys, if you are an African and you love African food, but you are trying to stay fit, <laughs> your prayers have finally been answered. Some people just cannot help themselves with that swallow and, you know, everything African. But the truth of the matter is a lot of African foods are high-calorie foods. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Dao's food. These people are preparing low-calorie African food, as in low calorie and African food in the same sentence, Jesus is Lord. So guys, you can go on their website. They've switched a lot of the swallows that you take with healthy stuff. For example, instead of just eating amala with yam flour, you can now eat chia seed amala, as in they use chia seed to prepare your amala flour for you. They are using, instead of the regular flours that you use for other foods, they are also using coconut flour, they're using flaxseed, they're using so many things to prepare healthy 
African foods that are geared towards making you slim. That is what they said. They said if you eat their food like that, you will enjoy African food and you will remain slim. Or if you were big, you will now be slim. So go on their website, check them out. If you live in Texas, by the way, they have nine different locations where you can purchase their products. Uh, it, they are listed on the screen. If you're living in Texas, make sure you pause it and you can look at all the stores that they have. Also, you can go on their Instagram page to order. You can order from their Facebook page. You, you can also order directly from their website. I'm really excited about this. Quite all, let's make sure they send some of their foods to me. Let me try it now. Yes, write them. Tell them to send some to your girl. y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook here and instagram and if you're yet to subscribe to my channel i'm watching you on plasma tv press the subscribe button and the bell button until next time i'm gonna see you all later peace out